All right, welcome back. A couple tweets here, Gene. Um, Henry tweeted, he wanted to know what the average was for a game in 1960. Well, I don't know it, but I would guess it was 220, 230, something like that. You know, and at uh, Doc John Co. two thoughts, seven innings. His other thought, he wants to know what's wrong with James Harris, and I can tell you they're not playing him because he, he's not good in pass coverage, but seven innings? Uh, what's your thoughts on that? I don't know. I don't like seven innings. I don't really like that idea. Um, and then shortened baseball games is from Henry. Shortened baseball games by restricting batter's time to reset after each pitch. And we were just talking about this in the break. Yeah, that was the, that was the thing that was really evident in 60s baseball. Umpires ran the game a lot more strictly. They didn't like, uh, didn't really let you step out of the box. Uh, you can call time. You didn't always get it. Now you can call it right up until, until the, time, the time the pitcher's ready to pitch and get time. Um, and, you know, batting gloves have really added a lot to the game because people adjust them after every pitch. You know, there's a lot of posturing in a lot of ways. That didn't used to be that way. The little thing. But, you know, you know what's great about today, Gene? I just forgot. I had this in front of me. Starbucks um, unveils their chestnut praline drink. It's amazing. Is that today? Yeah, November 1st? Yeah. November 1st. You I can go out and get a chestnut praline. I love it. Right. Uh, it's one of my favorite drinks. Okay. Are, they, gonna, the are they a sponsor? No, they're not a sponsor, well, but I just be, like right? it. They should yeah. be because it just yeah. just the chestnut praline. That's the one that I really love. So the chestnut praline, praline nightly sports latte. call. Latte, yeah. Nightly the sports Starbucks call. chestnut praline nightly sports call. Sure, why not? Uh, we're going out to Matt in Uniontown right now. How you doing, Matt? Matt, you there? Yeah, I'm there. I'm here. Okay. Hey, I called the other shows about the same question. I never get an adequate answer. It suits me. All right. Number ninety-three for the Steelers. Why is he in the rotation? Can they play him to see what he has and well, make him better, you know, by getting him some experience? No, well, he just doesn't play. The nose tackle? Yeah. For later um, in the season? Well, I, mean, I think they got the rotation right now, and uh, Daniel McCullers isn't really part of it. I mean, he showed some flashes of it. He's a big guy, but it looks like they got who they want there. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Daniel McCullers, I like him. Last year, uh, when they had some injuries along the defensive line, he did get a number of snaps. And in a couple of games, I thought he made a little bit of an impact, but he was not able to sustain it. He didn't really have a great training camp this year. And uh, as Rich said, he's not in the rotation. Alu Alu has really uh, done a good job for them there, and so is Javon uh, Hargrave. Um, so and he's not ahead of either one of those. No. And, and he's not going to play outside. Yeah. So. And, you know, the Steelers really aren't in their base defense all that much. That's when he would play. I still think he plays Richie in, the, in a goal line situation, does he not? I know. He, I don't think. I think he was inactive a couple games, but I, th I think I've seen him in there. Um, you know, he's a guy that, honestly, I just really don't pay attention to because Hargro Hargrove is, Hargrave has been so good. Mm -hmm. Same with Olu Alu. I mean, Hayward. Those guys have been so good up front that there's no reason to talk about someone like McCullers. But thanks for the call. I really appreciate it. Um, all right. Hey, you know what? we got to take a break. Um, back to wrap things up. Coming up next. Stay right there.